about, the conversation has been about function, vibration, and we have to say time. We can say time relative to the vibration. The vibration may be a time. It's a time vibration, a vibration of time. And that is not who anybody is. And this is really the beauty of wisdom. See? It's not who you are. See? But it's what you've created or allowed to be created in your life situation mm -hmm. that is really put together to teach you something. Right. Going to a former, uh, a prior, rather, a prior understanding. See, all changes are steps, see, are steps to get beyond. All appearances are steps to get beyond. All beings are steps to get beyond. See, not so much absolutely or ultimately, but yes, to get beyond in terms of suffering. Why? Because no one is suffering, yet everyone suffers. So we have a little bit of a paradox here. And so the function then that we're talking about then is a karmic pressure function see, to force the individual to move on. See. So kind of an incubation period of some sort. Uh, being in the oven up until a point, say, baking for a while, say, till you, you're baked out, right? Or you blow up, say, you disintegrate. Uh, this is the nature of human experience. Right? For the creative, it makes sense. For the created, it doesn't make very much sense. So, because then for the created, that means the victimized, the effect on the effect end of the spectrum, more the stick, however you want to see it, uh, for them, they're stuck. So, or they have the appearance of being stuck. So. And then the timing of the vibration of appearance of being stuck then can fade or yield to a step up. Or a crisis that enables one to experience a step up or a change as such. So. Almost in all cases, a catalyst is needed, an agent is needed to precipitate that. So. Okay. That's what friends are for. But more importantly, that's what spiritual friends are for, to help you step up. See? Yeah. Then you see the teacher or guru is a kind of ferry boat man or woman. See, he said, oh, you need to rise, yes, okay. Okay. take you across the waters and then leave you to yourself see? at your destination. Help you to step over the waters, right? the mystery, the confusion, the darkness, and bring you to a place, a land place, a land point, let's say and or uh, some solid ground in terms of understanding or psychological state or condition of security, confidence, whatever it might be you need, and then you, you move on from there. And then if that uh, satisfies that step in your journey, then it's perfect. You find other steps. You find other ferry boat peeps as needed, if there is such a thing. So, so we're talking then function, vibration, having to do with time, and then also having to do with space. Yeah. The space of what? The space of your understanding. Yeah. So we talk about time as something as a linear process, horizontally speaking, from one point to the other point, taking time to get there. That means a lifetime, say, birth, uh, maturity, uh, experience, and, you know, let's say some kind of wonder you know, for or against yourself. And then you, you evolve to, let's say, some kind of awakening if you're progressing in this way. And you move on, you start to understand, integrate, and think less about yourself, say, which doesn't exist in, in reality, except as a conventional, sort of, let's say, prop or mechanism, which is also based upon time. Say, time to think about yourself. Say, when in fact we, we are part of a continuum of consciousness which doesn't think, actually. It has never had to think because it knows. That's the deepest state of our own mind, see, right? Another function, or maybe a higher function, is the brain. See, to know for itself. Some would say it's the unconscious. Others would say, in the spiritual words, say it's superconsciousness. It's never not present. It's always present. But we don't tap into it because we're, we're busy looking at the monkey in the mirror. See, and we're dealing with peeps who want you to look at the monkey in the mirror and work from the monkey in the mirror. That means what you appear to be and what the memories are associated with that, which is also another time program. See. And then we have to question very deeply to what extent that is who we are and to what extent that as who we are is serving what purpose. Yeah. 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 
when we enter the real spiritual, that means the real immaterial, the real no, no reality in terms of physical reality, no appearance, and then we're talking about heart nature. Once we enter, there's the sense of heart nature, then it's just zero, zero heart space. There's no self, but there's all, all consciousness, it's radiance. It's your intelligence is there. Your pure, uncontaminated, unpolluted intelligence is waiting for you. It's, just, it's n never anywhere else. Others can point to it. Teachers will make, make you very intensely aware of it. Say, no, it, it is you, but it's not yourself you. It's the heart you, but it's not an emotional you. It's a deeper sense of reality, connectedness with the universe, cosmic you. It's a deeper you. So these things have to be reconciled as you go along the path in terms of what the meaning is and how the meaning would appear to be symbolic at one stage and it's very concrete the next stage. And you say, but I am the heart. And then somebody says, no, you're my daughter. I said, no, really? No, I'm not your daughter. You're crazy. <laughs> say, no, but you are. You've always been our baby. Say, no, I'm not that anymore. But you awaken. Say, beyond the box of role playing, which is self identification, which can be a problem. Say, and time is also a barrier that we need to understand as well. Say, we are not time, but yeah, we're in time. So you these paradoxes are very useful, say. <clears throat> very useful. And to, to leave it to an individual doesn't have guidance, doesn't have uh, access to deeper unconscious waves of intelligence, mm -hmm. then it can be uh, an issue where confusion more than realization is more the result, mm -hmm. definitively more the result. And say, well, for real, you're confused, say, you're stuck. And then you see the teacher, the teacher seems stuck too. <laughs> but that's because the teacher is not stuck in what you're stuck in. The teacher is not stuck in muck, so to speak. Right? Resulting in immobility, the teacher is realizing stillness as a dynamic of intelligence, a still point, point, stays on the point, from which everything can be understood properly, say, as being appearance and not real, say, beyond the point. Kind of. yeah. mm -hmm. And so this, this applies to our karmic lessons, emotionally, relationally, sexually, and all the rest of that, occupationally as well. Mm -hmm. so it's a step along the path. To what? From what? Should be clear as you, you know where you're going. So. Mm -hmm. so if you're going to what we're talking about, which is the complete realization mastery of the karmic field, and that doesn't mean you're, you're controlling anything. No, you're properly situated so that what happens, happens of itself. More than just self-driven, self-created, as such, self-fabricated, self-imagined. And we want to distinguish that, self-imagining from real vision, which means seeing the whole picture and the whole life in a flash, done, complete. Mm -hmm. And as a result, there's no way fear can come into the, the process. Although the body as a machine, instinctually speaking, operates by way of the intelligence of fear. See? So it's like a safety, some kind of safety valve that's built into us. Safety uh, programming, see, to keep us safe. Say, oh, don't go this way, don't fe fear that, or be apprehensive about this, and you get these vibrations that are warnings rather than paranoia. See? See, so we're talking about a very complex thing when we're speaking of human nature, very complex, almost like, uh, incomprehensible. And yet we are required to find a direct line from point A to point B, right? Simple straight line without entanglements, without involvement, without complication, without neuroses. That's why it's important for there to be some basis in that spiritual practice. Mm -hmm. Contemplating stillness, but being open to being informed from the, let's say, superconsciousness and being in resonance with the superconsciousness. So that before too long, as a result of good practice, you can see that you're not doing what you thought you were doing. Something else is doing it better than you're doing it as a self. Okay, come in. Good. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, right, very good. Yeah. So we, we want to get back to understanding what the inner mind is as a flame, okay. a spot, point that is easily overwhelmed. You wonder why it's so easy to be confused. Well, because, you know, we are, excuse me, 
animals right mm. that love distraction yeah. we believe we need that much distraction right so we're talking about going overboard without proper judgment without a sense of balance without a sense of intelligence as to exactly what we need so we like overload and that turns into a sort of confusion yeah. and you need to sh shut it down to a degree or I guess we can say we use the word stop, look and listen, which I think is a good formula for some peeps that might help them to some degree to stop, look and listen properly, see? be able to see and hear and then maybe know for themselves. Because yeah. yeah. we are much the effect as we are the cause. It's, we have to understand this. This is something that is perfect in, in regards to what this is. Yeah. If you're talking about you as a great effect victim, it means there has to be a cause somewhere in there. You're as much the cause of your victimization mm -hmm. as anything else. The cause is there. The source is obviously there. You are the source and you are the effect of that. Now, all the time, not for a second without it. <clears throat> that is enough to sit you down and say, hmm, wait a minute. <laughs> What's going on here? What am I doing to myself? What am I allowing here in terms of self to do to itself? Mm. <laughs> you gotta throw those things out in the garbage. Uh, toss it in the garbage. Uh, uh, just stop. Mm. Be being for a moment. Mm. Uh, breathe. Relax. <clears throat> Take it in. Breathe it out. Release. <clears throat> Take on. And so on and so forth. Uh, very simple process. So it can't be that easy. No, it is. Right. Right. See, Zen Just like that. And you take it away again by your programming. <coughs> Just like that. Already gone. Oh, then it comes back again just like that. And before you know it, you're hearing the clap before it claps. So you know the clap is coming. <laughs> and you stop. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> you, know, you know it's time. <clears throat> Come on. It's always present. It's always source. It's the only thing that's true. If there is a true, a stable true, it is it, beingness. From the beingness, then everything else is added onto that because that's what the being's experience is, right? or so called experience. So, in other words, you are originally Lord, and then for some reason you, you descend from that. <laughs> You come out of the clouds and wipe up right, in a puddle. <laughs> but <clears throat> when you see from this light, all, all your petty self stuff just doesn't count. And nothing anybody's ever said to you about yourself means anything. What matters, according to the mastership, is original spiritual essence. We're going right back to the, the egg and sperm. So it's sperm and soul. And before that, because that's a symbol, that's the inter, that's in the medium. So you have the spiritual, immaterial, foggy universe that came from, here it is, and then, boom, you see, gross human. Uh, going back to the source, the origins, right there in the womb. The womb of it, the matrix. The, the womb of life. <clears throat> the matrix of the universe. Yeah. 
You are the matrix of the universe. But then what is that? Source point. Cause. But what's the cause of that? Okay, so I'll do it back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. <clears throat> so the issue is not about product, okay, but process. We are not that interested in the created, the created, as in the creative, yeah, creative. So you may be are obliged to produce a certain kind of invention or robotic uh, specimen, right? extension of your own nature, your own baby, let's say, you have babies out there, your family of wires and <laughs> circuits. <laughs> it's funny, but it's true. In any case, I mean, that's what, that's what we produce. <laughs> you see perfect examples of it in here with us. Yeah, but the, the important thing is the being of the being, see, uh, the source of the creation, right? The mother of the creation. This is, how is the mother doing? <laughs> right? When I'm talking motherboard, we're talking mother. I mean, we're talking about eggs and sperm and so on earlier, so we're really getting back to the source of the creation. Yeah. 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 Spontaneous creativity. Yeah. That's what it is. So, how you solve the problems relative to what you're doing is there no, so no interest, you know, basically. But we want to know how you're solving you being, being. So, how are you being being? Can you be being, or do you have to be uh, related to the producer of effects? So, and so we know that you have to be being first, always. And being at peace with being first, and then we 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 we'll say we can handle the effects of that. But if you are not uh, at peace being being, then I mean you the the fact that you're not at peace, it's going to be also in your product. So it has to say, so even though you can make a perfect product, you can make a perfect product and be at not at peace, be at odds with yourself. So. And in, in, in the world of creative people, they are often at odds with the, what they create, because <laughs> they're at odds, most importantly, with themselves. And so they use that sort of tension. And then I would call that not really creative, but reactive creation. Reactive creativity would be a subspecies of spontaneous creativity. Because when you get to, this is our ideal, when you get to spontaneous creativity, <clears throat> then uh, it creates of itself. Love always you. Now, when I came here wondering about the music, what I kept seeing more deeply into was that it wasn't about the music, it was about creativity manifest. Mm -hmm. And that was something that was so is still so vital to mm. my feeling of completeness mm. and my, you know, wanting to, you know, uh, basically my, my essence, mm. a certain recognized part of my essence, mm. that it was, uh, yeah, that's, that for me was, mm. was a big reveal about what you're doing as a musician is, mm. is that this is just, this is just creativity. Mm -hmm. And and it's yeah we we can say it's, it's it's a form of genius yeah working by itself right so it's liberated genius we can say that that's what all the jazz musicians say right that they've never played with anybody that this this crazy which means inspiring to them and it's something they feel they they say things like well when we play with you something completely different happens right mm -hmm. I mean if you know Rockalabi. Yeah, he's, he's very generous with his comments. Oh, you well, you, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 
know, the biographer and uh, your own way. So, yeah, so this is what they say. I can't explain that. See? So it's not like, oh, you know, I walk around with big arms like Arnold Schwarzenegger, say, you know, hey, watch out, you know, I'm here, finally. You know, I, I, I don't have any thought of it. See? And that's the beauty of it. It's, it's a product of extreme humility, in a sense. You know, that's hard to put into, you know, context. See? But then what I can say is I don't do it. So when somebody says, hey, man, that was a great set you played, I say, or he, someone would say, hey, man, great job, or how did you do that? I said, I didn't do it. With 100% sincerity, I said, didn't do it. I said, man, you played some wonderful guitars. I didn't play any wonderful guitar. I said, I know what you're talking about. I said, with sincerity. See, that means there's a different function going on here with the music that I had uh, uh, from childhood, right? a different level of hearing that I've written about, and I call it Huda Realization, Huda. Might have the Buddha, or might have the Huda. Okay. The Huda is about the eyeballs and scripture, see, and hearing through the eyes. This is in my hearing, yeah. directly, direct hearing. Okay. Hearing into silence, in fact. Okay. And that's part of our nature, too. So then, then we're talking about, well, what's the result of that, whatever you're calling it? So say, well, some people who are experienced in the music would say it's living creativity. And that is even kind of incomprehensible, well, the living creativity. Well, he knows that he, yeah, he's attempted to play as an ordinary person, and he sees that I don't do it that way. Yeah. And you say, well, you know, I, it's still hard to believe, but I mean, he, he knows, just as these jazz masters know. They know from their own experience that this is difficult. Like Rashid, you know, he has his own words. Yeah. And so, in other words, we have access to that, all of us. And this is what we talked about is the distinction earlier between spontaneous creativity, right, of itself, it's a concept. And in other words, you have to be master before you can get to that, in a sense. You have to have mastered the instrument and then be able to turn it over, in a sense. Yeah. to spirit, with the inner intelligence. Yeah. And we're talking then about, let's say, we have to call it the inner genius. Right? The genius, I mean, the what knows what to do without you, yourself, your pipsqueak self, being involved in it. And it's better when you're not there. Right? And it says it directly to you. Hear it. <laughs> Say, please get out of the way, you nothing. <laughs> You would have sought person. And this is bigger than that. See? And this is a potential in all beings. So this is like a native uh, radical form of common sense that we all have this. So we need to make way. So the language that we use is uh, no self. Get, get, get the self-image programming out of the way so that what you feel is what it can work with. It'll work with what you feel, not what you think you are, as a, as a limitation, as a form of it, anything. Although, to master music, you need to deal with all the forms. So, in other words, this, this comes as the fruit of transferring the power of your knowledge, your musical intelligence or musical education over to this thing, which is you, another level of your own being. The same with the athletics. We're talking Olympians. They have to be able to turn over like what they, they're doing to something stronger than themselves when they're feeling they're weakening and they're, you know, they're not cutting it, they're not up the hill and everybody's passing them. They, they got to depend upon something, so they may be praying in certain terms, you know, if we can tune in and listen to them, like, oh my God, God, please help me, Jesus, or whoever it is, anybody, right? Everybody come to my aid, help me win this race. Right? In other words, they're appealing to something they know can do better than themselves. There's an intuition about that, that they have more, right? There's the infinite. So they're appealing to the infinite in themselves. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. And so if you stop a champion who just won the gold medal, say, how'd you do it? I'm not sure, but you know, it happened. It happened. Right? Some of them say, I trained. Everybody trained. Not everybody's standing there with you. <laughs> Some may have trained more than you and deserve it more than you. But, you know, you are able to work with the forces well enough right, so that it took over. And then you see people doing it. 
like in the case I didn't see this movie, but it's a great movie, uh, Secretariat, right? Of course. And I had I had heard about this movie, and I said, man, okay, I'm going to watch a horse movie. <laughs> Okay, I'll do it, I'll try it. But then, when, when you see the movie, it takes you to a whole other level. But that's the level I'm talking about. Super consciousness. So he not only won the race, but his, his record is still untouched. <coughs> and this is us in potential. And so we're talking music, you know, then we're talking super music. And the jazz you're talking about is super music. And yet I tell the people to ask me questions, I say, no, the super music is, is the first step, not the last step. That's the first step. You got to start from super music. Right? And so you have a comment on starting from super music, then where do you go from there, right? You comment. Now that you're in the race, <laughs> he's in the race now, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, go ahead. Heart blood on the web. Read that, okay? Because there I'm telling these people who are critics, musician friends, that this is not about that. This is something deeper than kind of cultural interpretation. This is not about personal attitude. I don't play on a personal attitude of superiority or inferiority. No, no. This is more direct. So you hear from a realization that you'll find resonance with. You will find resonance with it. Because even though I'm talking about music and my intelligence relative to it or what was given to me. See, if I'm a spiritualist by culture, then it's, a, it's all given to me. It's not mine, except in a given sense. See, so my aunts would say, oh no, that's what's given to you. The spirits give it to you. It's good enough. Yeah, yeah it's better. Come on. Um, mm -hmm. So you spoke about creating the music, but... In a, about in a certain context, yeah, creating music. Go ahead. What about, you know, someone like me who doesn't create music but who can listen to it and appreciate it? Do you, do you think that there's some sort of wisdom contained in that? that there is. I mean, it's a void. Well, firstly, when, when you speak about esoteric understanding of music, I mean, it's the, it's the word of God, but not in, 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 in words. Huh? In the beginning was the word, right? But the word was God. And in this sense, we have to apply that even to the Hindu teachings that say, Nada Brahma. See, that the word, the sound is God. Sound is God. Nada. See, Brahma. No, sound is creative God. Sound is that. In other words, the universe is created of sound. Strings of sound. Yeah. Vibrations. Same thing. Vibrations. You're talking about the vibes earlier. We're talking about that. See, everything is built upon it. Yeah. So we're talking about vibrations to the infinite uh, disappear in silence. Maybe another vibration we can't measure properly yet. Say, so, well, what is that? We had a perception here of vibration, and then we followed it, and then it, it, it disappeared. It disappeared from perception. So it's imperceivable, but it doesn't mean it's not, there's something that, that is not there. Right? The animals hearing way, way beyond us, insects hearing something way, way beyond us, in a sense. Right, we're talking about what we can at least see we're measuring our relative limitations by. What, what about universes we can't see? No. Uh, universes, because you have imagination, right? You have a big brain, right? So you see universes, not just this pipsqueak universe we call it, what we call universe, right? the obvious universe. This is a big, big bang universe. Right? It's like a speck of dust in the reality of universes. Right? <clears throat> so sound is, is a basis, because you see, we speak from sound. We're sound beings originally. That's what I have stated in some of my writings is that I'm not a musician, I'm a soundian. They originally soundian. I play what I heard, I did, but where did I hear it? I didn't hear it out here. It's not from, from other peeps, I heard it from inside, which means it's coming from a source point, which is our true nature. We're, we're, we're designed to hear from the source point. So then we have to get away from the books, get away from the thinking, and go to where it all really comes from inside, the inner ear. The inner ear. And it's not about hearing, it's about earring. <laughs> Where's your earring? Where be your earring? <laughs> what is your ear, inner ear pressed up against at source? What is your earring? 
Because at that point, it's not like you're hearing it. You're, you're hearing it. I mean, you're, you're being it. You're being it. And we're talking something also that could be seen in terms of the fundamental experience of hearing your heartbeat and hearing the universe in that heartbeat. And more, that's the surface of it. It has all, all this, the inner resonances and vibrations going on between those two dominant thumps. Pum, 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 pum. It's like symphonic. You can hear the symphony in the heartbeat and you start to hear the way I speak. Yeah. Uh, then you were talking about getting to a level of musical intelligence. It's not common. It's not common. Yeah. I can't explain it beyond the point. It's just the way I was given to hear. Uh, if you hear the music and you see, you see what I've done so far, which is maybe not even a, a, a particle of what could be done, then you understand. Say, no, he's talking, but he's doing it in a certain way. See? And we're talking then about the realization of the paradox of what, what it could mean in terms of sound and silence, uh, which is where we are. Uh, you know, we are between sound and silence. You know, we are the source of it, but we're between it at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So that means the mystery. What could be more mysterious than sound, right? That your you heart and mind open to, but you know you can't understand. <laughs> You can accept it, so you can understand it as, as a great form. But even the musicians, if, you, if I ask them, all right, you heard this piece, what does it mean? Oh, what does it mean? Now, how can it not mean anything, since it is an original language of human, human being, original language? And because it is what it is, let's say a piece by Michael Jackson or Stevie Wonder or any of these other great artists, everybody on the planet is like, ooh! Right? Everybody's crying over it. <laughs> it's fantastic. So everybody comes to their knees. So everybody's heart is like reduced to the same yuck. <laughs> Mercy, help, help. Save me from this emotion, right? It's heartbreak. So, yeah. Yeah, so there's no question about the power of it, the importance of it in terms of the astral connection that is heart to heart. It's like one heart. Right? Now, my function is not just to play beautiful music, which I can do to a certain degree, you know, as much as I can tolerate it. Yeah. But there's too much of that going on. See? So I, I don't feel there's a need for me to play that kind of music as, as such. So, or to play classical music. I mean, that's already done. And. Classical musicians will keep that going forever. So it's being covered completely. But beyond that, yes, what is it? Well, that's human intelligence. See, beyond the classical forms, right, which haven't exhausted anything, even if we're talking about Schoenberg and these other peeps and, and Berg uh, working with uh, semi tall and uh, you know, chromatic patterns and all the rest of it, assuming that, well, that's going to cover all of it then, because we're, we're using all the notes and all the chords. It doesn't cover anything. It doesn't cover it, because it's more than that. See? It's intelligence. It's intelligence. And the, the possibilities of using even a few notes are pretty infinite. Depends on who's using the notes. So we're saying, yes, it is truly a, an amazing, astonishing kind of reality. And I think some of the psychologists would agree that genius shows up in, in, uh, in terms of music earliest of all the forms of genius, which means we are closest to music as people. They, all of us are closest to music as humans than we think. Because of sound, that means word, tongue. They talk, and the tones talk to us, say, non-intellectually, intuitively, they talk to us, so your feelings are correct. Say, yeah, I love this, it's liberating, I feel happiness and joy, and ecstatic bliss, and power, and light. Exactly, yeah, yeah, that's what it's for. Yeah. Therefore, it's called ecstatic jazz. It's ecstatic jazz, out of the body, out of the mind jazz, like pure African music, which is what African music is about. Uh, I was raised on that, so it's part of my culture. Uh, 
So all of this is important because what we're talking about is you're, f you're finally admitting you didn't understand it, but you love the, the happiness it brings you. And that's, what, that's why it's medicine. So you've got the message. That's what music is for. Okay, to help you transcend yourself as a, as a thought machine. Because it's not about thought. We're talking about that level of avant-garde music is thoughtless. It's not about what anybody thinks. It's beyond what they think. It has to be what they hear, despite what they think. And then when they're thinking, then I, I go back, I'll walk over to a musician and say, you stink. <laughs> You're stinking now. You gotta get back to feeling this. Because it's obvious. There's a slowing down of the vibrations as soon as the thought comes in and self-consciousness arises. Uh, no, that smell, oh, please. Right. So we need people who are free of that, so what it is can come through directly, freely, and intensely. Come in. Yeah, it seems like a good metaphor for life in general. You, know, you, you try too hard or you think too much, you fail, and have to be uh, relaxed and, you know. Exactly. So it's, then, it seems like a big problem becomes, you know, how do you achieve that? It's easy to say, just do it, you know, just be it, but... You no, know, no, it's not easy to say that. Oh, well. it's, it's very hard to say it and mean <laughs> it. No, it's easier said than done in a manner of speaking. Mm -hmm. See, but it's, it's easier said than done in the manner of speaking when you're really controlled by the ego. Then it's easier said than done. But, but once you are in resonance and you're open to what it is, then it's almost half done. The idea is to be open to it as a reality, not just a thought. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad you said that. What you said. Yeah. Well, because it is all you, right? What you're saying is true. It is heart. It is heart. Yes, it is heart. It is not just you. Depends then on what you mean by you. If you're talking about self thought, mind, word, right? Intellect, right? Emotions, right? Bad memories, disasters. That's, that's not what we're talking about. So then, what are the first steps to kind of freeing yourself from all this? internal conflict and shit. That's Sitting right here. <laughs> and knowing better for yourself. That is the first step. Knowing there's more th than that. See? That the peace is already a present condition. See? Light is already the original condition of everything in the universe. See? And so sound and sound is what it is. Sound is the silence of the universe. It is that. I mean, you, you hear silence. I mean, you're hearing sound. Come on now. I mean, you you have the scientists creating language, doesn't mean they have anything right. Okay? <laughs> you need to go to the natives to have confirmation of what it is. Yeah. Well, in some cases, you have to go to the musicians to find out. Yeah. So does enlightenment become a goal? Like, it, 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 it can become a goal, but it, it is the original condition. So it's, it's, not, like, so it's not like a product. It's, it's already present. You need to open to what it is. <laughs> You're, si you're sitting on it. <laughs> you're sitting on the cushion of enlightenment right now. <laughs> Total enlightenment. I mean, being playful, but it's also being completely straight with it. Okay. Completely, honestly, sincerely truthful about it. It can't be anywhere else. So where, how does all this internal conflict and, and, you know, like ego, where does this all go? Like, how do you... How do you well, it doesn't go, it doesn't, it doesn't actually go anywhere. It just doesn't, it becomes unimportant. <laughs> becomes unimportant. It's not like you're just going to disappear and you're going to be egoless. Egolessness is something that happens right in the middle of the ego. Right? <laughs> so, so, in other words, if you're listening to music, you're enjoying that to no end, I'm assuming, right? And it's not because your ego went somewhere because your perceptics are attuned to something that is more important in your mind, see? and which we know is real here in, in the circle of music. So you're, you, you should be completely open to what you're hearing, right? In the musical form, it's much easier, because especially if you're not burdened by words, if we're talking abstract music, yeah, it's easy to let go of that because you're not being slowed down by words. As soon as you add an operatic line to it or something, it becomes something you have to think about. But when it's just sound, you don't need to think at all. So the, the left brain is like, kind of like switched off. 
To a degree, not completely. Because from the sound can come thought. So you need to be open to that. And so while we're playing, as soon as we hear something, that because we, we still have the left brain somewhat on, not in an ordinary sense, but in a musical sense, then it can start to formulate exactly what it needs to be used for. And that is to recreate things going on in the space of the music on a second by second, moment by moment basis. See, without that, you don't have the level of creativity that you're able to like, understand and accept in the case of, let's say, the Coltrane level of music, which is relative to what I play. Yeah, that kind of output. Madness, you would talk madness now, right? Absolutely. Ecstatic madness, right? Which is our nature. Which in the orgasm and sexually, people try to find that kind of madness. This is better. This is much better than that. That's fine, that's great, that's beautiful, but this is much better than that. Because this then becomes a shared event, right? It doesn't have any limits. You keep the orgasm going, that's called music. <laughs> music is orgasm. Yeah, orgasmic in nature. So then it's what, what you consider to be more important. If we go going now to strict traditional knowledge and teaching, then you're talking about scripture, you have to study the wisdom. Studying the wisdom is a way of saying, and I said this last night in a kind of cute sense, you know, you're full of crap. <laughs> Your mind is not good enough. Yourself is like garbage. So you got to study wisdom from the masters. So then you're assuming the right mind, the right level of, let's say, mental activity. In this case, it's deep paradoxical wisdom. Awakening, say, to the end of nothing. Awakening as nothingness to the end of nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And that sort of freezes your mind a little bit. I mean, the ego just kind of starts slipping and sliding as if it's on ice. See, so it has no grounding. It's just like, <laughs> like you're skating and you don't want to skate. Right? You have to slip because you're going down a hill or whatever it is. See? That means we're talking about different tracks of intelligence, which is good. It's not bad. It's not negative. Certainly functional. So trying to get you on the right track and we're calling it the neutral path of transcendent or paradoxical wisdom, which is really to quiet the mind down. And its ultimate purpose is to reveal to the individual, the seeker, the student, whatever, that everything is relative. Because you're making absolute everything without knowing it's all relative. Everything is absolutely relative, which is the truth of it. Relative to what? Everything you say can be relative to what? Yeah. All right, so like, it's like thought process is relative to your brain condition, right? your, your level of education perhaps, and so on and so forth, all the way down to like your, what we said, the egg and the sperm and so on. Go right back down to that source. But then we have to defy that. So we say, okay, we saw the physical manifestation of this. We, we got that creation as a, as a manifestation. We got that. All the way down to the first egg, first sperm, sperm or whatever. So you see that infinite origins. Let's say before the Big Bang, pre Big Bang. Right? And we say, no, we're more than that. We're the consciousness of all and nothing at the same time. And that's where we're playing from. We're playing from this kind of level that it's all notes, all times, all harmonies, and nothing to such a degree where the music is perfectly what it is. Nobody gets in the way of it. Whether you're playing melodies that you agree upon or not, it doesn't matter. And there's no hesitation and no slowing down because there's no thought process that means that much in terms of this process. That has to be sacrificed in the process. No, no none of this makes any sense, but that's good. <laughs> it's like the music. But it, again, What's important is that you have the connection with it, and it is, as you called it, wisdom, definitely wisdom. It's paradoxical wisdom, and it can keep you happy because it makes no sense. It's the nothing factor of it that is mysterious, even though it has values. Some of the guitar players I've known will, will set the music up on a certain kind of chart and analyze the music, I mean, for in their mind, scientific purposes, logic seeing what it is, but there is none in the universe. The universe is spontaneous happening. It's not thinking about itself. It just is what it is. Chemical conditions create explosions, starbursts, 
nebulized and all the rest of these things that are going on in the universe. So, so. And no, nobody's keeping account. Nobody's like counting the leaves. Okay? That's how vast the intelligence is. Right. It's not that petty. Now, how many particles? Know, how many atoms? Like that? How many subatomic particles? Yeah, it's not changing what it is. So. Okay. It's examining something that you can say is a preoccupation with what it, what, what it is not. Right. Is it really subatomic particles or is it? Is it or isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> no, it can't be any of that, but that's the fact. You see, science is a step towards what, what it is we're talking about. We can realize like that and you hear it in the sound. You don't care about that. Because then you're caring about your being the being. And that's what we're talking about. What enjoys that crazy music is your being okay with your being, right? Crazy. <laughs> but you don't want to have to be thinking too much about it as you have to, let's say when you're wearing the scientist helmet, right? Helmut, you're putting that on, right? And you say, no, 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 that's, this is too crazy. This is too much. Yeah, the music's much, much easier than that. So music's already truly true madness, and according to certain systems, the highest form of madness given to man, that is like divinely connected. Yeah. But not necessarily in terms of Bach, except Bach in a divinely connected classical structural sense. True to him, true to his time, true to his 22 kids. I might be playing music like that if I had... 22 kids to keep up with. <laughs> I say, Bach, how can you do that? You know? But that's part of his music. See? That's part of his crying, his soul, soul searching, part of his, his mastery, see? his gift. So it's to handle that much pressure and you hear in his music. Church music as such. His worship of his Lord. He's a very super religious person. So he wasn't just into his music. We see he was into the, the etheric worship of the divine in the form of Jesus. So it's good. Yeah, that's good. Because that's completely abstract. So you got to have a lot of intuitional imagination for that. So the God is, if you got to find God in Jesus, it takes a lot of imagination. That's like finding God in time, right? Middle East time. And that, that's a high point. If you can get to that place, that's a high point. But we need to go beyond Earth time, let alone Middle East time. Okay. So the music that's beyond Earth time is good music. And that's the music we have here. It's not about Earth, past, present, or future. It's about something else. So it remains as it is, its own level of reality. We call, I call it hard fire sound. I can't even call it music. can't even call it jazz. Even though all of these things are, find some reality in this music in this stream but he was saying that he had access to streamed music yeah <clears throat> but here you come here you get the real stream of the music the real basis for the music you get the intelligence and the inspiration for the music all together at the same time and you get more direct access to the anami productions here you know as needed you know, if you need something you take it with you and study it for yourself I would recommend that you get something like Alpha Nebula we also have the two, we have the, the trilogy is complete now. We have Alpha Nebula, we have Omega Nebula, if that's not sick enough, you go Omega Nebula. If that's not sick enough, then you go to Parasamgati Nebula. <laughs> and that features my son chanting, Rebbe's on that, right? And uh, I'm playing the, you know, guitar and acoustic guitar and Shanai. And we have a friend who's playing drums, and it's very, very primordial, which is the purpose here. Primordial sound before, I mean, it represents primordial sound after death right? primordial sound meaning and that's Rebusar and when we're in that kind of configuration so well, that means in the spirit realm being completely in the spirit realm where you hear things right and you feel things but completely like of another 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 level of time another reality of time and remember we're all times see to be source we are all times and all beings and all planets all realities all universes, but when do we, when do we abide as the truth of that? Yeah. How often do we get a chance to abide as the truth of any of that? 
So you need to be around abiders. And then you start to assume abidance. It's much easier because it is human to human, it's heart to heart. And that's the, uh, in the traditions they say, by transmission. It's recovery by transmission. <clears throat> association, recovery by association. If you're around a certain type of uh, image of alien peeps or others, uh, intergalactic, uh, in extraterrestrials, I think that's a common word used by the scientists now, uh, then you start to assume. You, you can resonate with them if they're not destructive, you know, not, even though they look like insects, according to certain uh, abductees. You know, they say they, 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 the ones who were the physicians were insects. They were calling them uh, what, uh, uh, praying mantis-like. Right, and yet there's scientists. It seems like we're the bugs, <laughs> you know. <laughs> right? The praying mantis aliens are, are examining us and taking specimens from us. <laughs> At least they're not stepping on us and crushing us too soon. <laughs> Please, not too soon. We should all get together and pray to them. <laughs> not too soon. <laughs> Give us some more time. We're getting our work done here. Yeah, comment on that. <laughs> yeah, science is pretty limited in a lot of ways that it, it won't admit, and one of them is we just don't know what's outside of our ability to perceive, and so there very well could be aliens, you know, all around us all the time. They are, they are. We we have. It, it is safe to assume that they are, they, all the time. They've been watching the planet all the time, and they haven't in, inter inter uh, interfered with it all of the time. But they, they have made, you know, made themselves known to various peeps, uh, and they are definitely present, but they're on a different mission. And, and they're talking about what some people know, authorities like MUFON and these peeps who have studied it, this kind of phenomenon, when they, they say this. Hundreds of species, uh, of different types of greys and who knows what, greens and, you know, and whatever other colors of these types of beings that have, seen, have been seen. And then insects, lizards, and all kinds of other scientists in certain bodies from different dimensions and different galaxies. So as uh, Stephen Hawkins says, if they're a million years ahead of us, then there's something to fear. There's not something to welcome. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, that's just a thought from somebody who may not know what he's talking about. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, missed some things. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's his concern about it. So yeah, we're, we're in this. But getting back to being the being is like getting away from all of the fantastic, all the phantasmagorical, all of the crazy stuff out there, and getting back to our origin as, as native relative to music, see, and working from that, see, and being uh, humble in the spirit of the music, but hoping that we're getting music from good sources. See. If we're talking Coltrane music, that is so deliberately intentionally spiritual and that means goodness loving say, loving goodness offering kindness to other peeps compassion then we're talking about a species of music that is heart music that's what I'm playing in my way not I play with people you know that are related to him but they see that I'm doing my thing and not doing anybody else's thing and therefore I have their respect because they're not going to respect somebody it's just doing their, 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 what is it, John Coltrane's thing. That's already been done, so that people need to be doing something different, even though maybe parallel to that. It would have to be distinctively its own thing for them to honor it. See? And you can understand that. Mm -hmm. So we have, we have a responsibility to keep the music true to the heart and true to the uh, mind in the highest sense of the word. And that's what we try to do. And again, it's, you know, it's, it's not everybody's music, it's crazy music. But for good reason, see? because if you're not crazy, you're crazy out here. See? And the crazier, the craziest, right? Like the murderers and all that, they get they get all the airtime, <laughs> right? Sickness and, and disease and degeneration get, gets too much of the airtime out here. Yeah. And that could be a change. See, we should have programs that have more positive things, you know, ultimately higher things. Not just religious things, but creative things. There should be more creativity programming. Say more of that rather than less. Because there's a lot of film, there's a lot of Hollywood going on. 
we need the people need a, a direct line to creativity and what the potential is. And so yeah, I guess you got to go to s certain stations for it. I, I don't see much of it when when I'm on the tube looking for news news updates and weather updates. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just not that broad in my uh, what is it uh, exposure to stuff that's out here. So, so I appreciate having a chance to to talk to you about these things. And, yeah, thank you. My question has to do with uh, correctly receiving, hearing, understanding, and using wisdom, especially stuff that uh, you know we may not have the exact context for fully mm -hmm. understanding yet. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you need to practice. So the idea of practice then is to take you deeper than language, so that you can use use language in a more windowic manner like a wind door. Uh, and then the strangeness of the language, such as, uh, let's say, uh, the title of one of the segments was Awakening into and the End of Nothing, right? Awakening as nothingness into the end of nothing. It would seem to be paradoxical or enigmatic in some kind of formulation of words that should mean something, right? Well, it doesn't mean everything, but you have to familiarize yourself with the language and or work from a level where you have enough space, space consciousness, right? You have the space of consciousness to be able to send, then intuitively link the words as, as a puzzle. Because you need to slow it down then. Okay? Awakening as nothingness to the end of nothing. Okay? And then peace by peace. Okay? So that your mind in the speed of, at the speed of light should be breaking it down into meaning proper meaning. Okay. And the way to best uh, determine whether you have an accurate interpretation of it is then bring it to the source, say, does that mean this? And then take it from there. And in the process, learn how to break it down, break the codes down, because then we're talking about a certain cryptic, uh, esoteric language that is not uncommon in, in spiritual uh, uh, traditions. Yeah. It's kind of koanic, koanic. Colon, uh, puzzle, but it's not. It seems to be a puzzle from the logical self mind, but it's not a puzzle from the heart mind. So I said, hmm. no. It's the end, okay, but it's one thing, one universe, and then nothing. It's another universe. They're not, they're not the same, they're not different, but they can be used for a deeper kind of meaning. And that's to recover your original space and not thought. Thought, not. Space, yes. May call it space thought. No, we don't mean outer space, we mean inner space. Awareness.